In 1388, the first king of the Joseon dynasty turned his army around at the right moment and defeated the last pillar of the Goryeo dynasty. Goryeo generals who felt the threat stole the kingdom's treasures and fled far out to the sea, never to be seen again. For years later, a group of thieves led by Muchi is drifting at sea on top of a piece of wood after escaping from a bunch of soldiers that wanted to capture them for stealing from the palace. Fortunately, they're found by Captain Hei Rang and her pirate ship, who rescue them and take them in. When he first sees her, Muchi thinks Hei Rang is a beautiful angel. However, for months later, he's learned how strict she is. Things are tense between both groups, the pirates think the thieves are lazy and gross, while the thieves think these aren't real pirates because they don't target merchant ships, only Japanese pirates. There's also the fact that the thieves don't know if listening to Muchi because he's their boss or to Hei Rang, because they're on her ship. One afternoon, they find another Japanese pirate ship and get ready to attack. Eager to show he's useful and talented, Muchi jumps ahead first, easily defeating their opponents with his advanced sword skills. Heirang's crew takes over the Japanese ship and while the enemy leader refuses to talk, one of their kids is so scared that he confesses they were looking for a big treasure. Luckily, the map has already been found by one of Heirang's men, and they discover this treasure is supposed to be the one Goryeo generals stole years ago. All the men want to go after it, and after some hesitation, Heirang accepts. Eventually, the group makes it to an island, where Muchi takes over guidance because Heirang is having trouble reading the map. When they suddenly see a cow, Muchi sees it as a welcome sign and goes after it with his bandits, but this turns out to be just the first cow in front of a herd and the guys are run over. Muchi is pushed off the cliff, and while the group thinks he's dead, he's actually fine and hanging on a branch, where he finds an old tusk. When he climbs back up, Heirang immediately grabs the tusk because she remembers one drawn on the map, and finds the real map carved on the bone. Before going after it, though, they have to take care of the cow-inflicted wounds. Hei Rang is tired of dealing with the thieves' bad decisions and explains she only took them out of pity, but now they're back on land, so if they want to keep traveling with them, they must become pirates under her command. Muchi refuses, thinking his men will back him up, but they all join Hei Rang, and Muchi is left on the island. Meanwhile, the remaining leader of the Goryeo dynasty is trying to get back to power and hires the legendary general Hyung Su for help. Hyung Su explains that before soldiers he'll need riches, so their best bet is to find the mythical treasure. Back on the ship, the crew is having a banquet to celebrate their success, only to find out that the tusk has been stolen while they were distracted. A note left behind indicates Muchi is the culprit, so Hei Rang takes a few men with her back to the island to recover the tusk. After a dangerous encounter with a tiger, Hei Rang finds Muchi in an abandoned shack and fights him until he confesses that actually, it was Thief Maki that took it. It turns out Muchi did go back to the ship in the middle of the night to steal the tusk and Maki helped him, pretending he was still loyal to his boss. But as soon as they made it to the shore and Muchi turned around, Maki stole the tusk again and took it with him. To make matters worse, Maki escapes the ship and goes to the mainland to try to sell the tusk to a rich merchant while pretending to be Muchi. Fortunately, the crew shows up just in time to stop the sale and take the tusk back, they also kidnap the merchant's daughter because she had been helping Maki. Once they return to the ship, Hei Rang decides Muchi, Maki, and the girl shall be punished with death. But when Muchi is about to be executed, he reveals he's been hiding a knife all along and manages to escape. He gets inside Hei Rang's office and steals the tusk to then hold it above the water, threatening to drop it if they try to hurt him. Hei Rang puts her sword down and accepts not to kill anyone if she's given the tusk back. Muchi does give it to her, only to be pushed into the water after Hei Rang reveals she's always known about his dagger and she only wanted to re-establish her leadership by reminding them she could kill them if she wanted. Muchi and Maki are sent to do manual labor while Hei Rang and her men take off the piece of cloth covering the tusk, but the message on it is encoded and they don't know how to read it. Meanwhile, General Hyung Su tortures a priest into revealing the location of the treasure and asks the dynasty leader to be named the next king if manages to find it, but his request isn't well received. Back on the ship, Hei Rang allows Muchi to look at the cloth and he manages to read the message, which says their next destination is the island of Higildo. This is a very dangerous place nobody has come back from and Muchi doesn't want to go, but Hei Rang thinks it's worth the risk. She takes a few men with her in a boat, each of them carrying a pig bladder filled with air before jumping into the whirlpool that takes them to the cave mentioned by the tusk. Muchi doesn't know how to use his bladder and almost drowns, so Hei Rang has to drag him out of the water and give him mouth to mouth to help him survive. 
The cave seems to be empty, but while everyone is ready to give up, Muchi notices something and is rude to Hei Rang just to provoke her right-hand man into a fight. By throwing the guy against a cave wall he makes it break, revealing a hidden path. The group follows this path and is happy to find a bunch of chests, only to get disappointed again when inside they only find some old bottles. There's also a strange flag with a monster head painted on it, but most interestingly, there's some code inside its mouth. Before they can decode it, though, something explodes and makes the cave shake. It's General Hyung Su and his men, who have arrived at the island and are entering the cave from above instead of having to struggle with the whirlpool. A fight starts between both groups and Maki takes the chance to look at the flag in secret before running away, but Hei Rang is knocked out by the falling debris from the cave ceiling. Muchi makes the men take her away while he stays back to fight. General Hyung Su gets more aggressive when he recognizes Muchi as the former soldier that stopped him from becoming king last time. During the war, Hyung Su had been promised kingship if he brought the enemy's head, and to achieve that victory, he killed his own wounded soldiers. When Muchi learned about this, he snitched on him and declared him a traitor. The battle is fierce and pretty equal, so Muchi distracts Hyung Su by throwing his sword at him before jumping back into the whirlpool with all the chests. Hyung Su tries to go after him, but without a pig bladder, he doesn't have extra air to stay this long underwater and must go back to his men. Then, Hei Rang shows up to help Muchi, but this time it's her who passes out because of lack of air. Muchi takes some air from the bladder and passes it to Hei Rang mouth to mouth getting to keep her alive. Before they can swim up, however, a whale shows up and swallows them both. The crew thinks they've lost their bosses, but soon the whale is expelling them through its blowhole and both of them safely land on the ship. In the meantime, Hyung Su finds the strange flag and quickly understands the code, thus he gets the dynasty leader to lend him a ship with powerful cannons to sail to the next location, although he still needs to solve the riddle on the corner of the flag. A few hours later, Hei Rang has a nightmare about fire dragons and finally realizes that the code she had seen on the flag had been a sea chart. She leaves her room and announces that they must go back to get the flag because it has the map to the next location. However, the girl quickly cuts in and lets everyone know Mackie had seen and understood the code. The crew jumps on Mackie and ties him up to make him confess what the code said, which turns out to be Inazuma Island, a place surrounded by lightning. Mackie thinks is too dangerous to go, yet he's the only one that knows the way, so if the crew wants him to guide them, then he demands to be captain until they find the treasure. Hei Rang isn't amused but she allows the crew to vote, and when she closes her eyes, everyone votes in favor of Mackie temporarily becoming captain because they want to find the treasure. Mackie becomes captain and Muchi and Hei Rang are put on kitchen duty. Hei Rang is an awful cook, but nobody dares to tell her her food tastes horrible because they're scared of her. Muchi tries to tease Hei Rang about the situation, and she snaps at him, explaining this isn't about power. She wouldn't have minded giving someone else her position if that person actually deserved it. She is right to think Maki is an awful captain, he bullies and insults the whole crew, hands punishments over nitpicky details, and his orders barely make any sense. Later in the evening, Muchi invites Hei Rang to watch the stars with him in the crow's nest and the two of them have a lovely bonding moment. The next day, the ship makes it to an area known as the Sea of Fire, which Hei Rang survived as a kid and is what gives her those nightmares. The legend says fire dragons come out from among the waves when in reality, there are small underwater volcanoes. Hei Rang wants to redirect the ship, but Maki refuses, claiming to know the route better. This causes them to get closer to Inazuma Island and soon the lightning is hitting the ship, starting a fire. Hyung Su's ship is arriving as well and they've put up kites to redirect the lightning and avoid getting hit. Back to the pirates, Maki is too scared and confused to do anything, so Hei Rang begins shouting orders again as she takes over the helm. Maki slips off the deck and almost falls into the water but Muchi saves him just in time before Hei Rang guides the ship out of the storm thanks to her quick thinking. Moments later, the crew takes two boats to the island, but Maki doesn't know where to go next because he only got to read the name of the location yet not the other details. The crew begins digging in random spots while Hyung Su and his men also arrive at the island, and thanks to having the riddle, they quickly guess they must climb the island's mountain, which is constantly under lightning. Muchi also notices this lightning, which always falls on the same spot, so he decides to go investigate alone after telling Hei Rang he's doing it for her. A few moments later, Muchi makes it to the top of the mountain, finding Hyung Su and his men already there. There are abandoned houses everywhere and the skulls of the founders of the Joseon dynasty on spears, 
but when Hyung Soo's men try to remove them in search of the treasure, they're all stabbed because it's an apparatus trap. There's only one spear left that Hyung Soo takes himself and he doesn't get hurt because that spear represents the last standing general. Meanwhile, Maki runs away from the crew to avoid their anger and bumps into a penguin with a gold bar in its beak. He calls the crew over and together they try to communicate with the penguin, to no avail. Suddenly, the sound of shooting cannons distracts everyone, it's Hyung Soo's ship attacking the pirate ship. Muchi also gets distracted by this and accidentally reveals himself, causing Hyung Soo to send his men after him while he opens the chest he found under the spear. Unfortunately, instead of treasure, he only finds an old mask that matches the face on the flag. Hei Rang is worried about Muchi, but she can't let the enemy get away with destroying their ship. With a heartfelt speech, she gets the crew to follow her leadership again and they divide the group in two, a few of them go up the mountain to help Muchi, while the rest goes back to the ship with Hei Rang. However, Maki is offended that the captainship was taken away from him and he leaves with the penguin to find the gold, putting a rope around the poor bird to follow it underwater. On top of the mountain, the thieves arrive as backup, giving Muchi the chance to steal the mask from Hyung Soo and ask him for a final duel. The fight is fierce and in the struggle, they knock the mask off, making it fall on top of Maki's head, who immediately grabs it and discovers the last piece of the puzzle. The mask says enter and it matches the shape of a cave under the island, so obviously he must go in that direction. Inside the cave, he finds a bunch of penguins standing on frozen land and, most importantly, the legendary ship with the treasure. Maki starts to celebrate only to be attacked by the penguins. Hei Rang and the rest of the crew manage to get on the boats, but by the time they get back, their ship is already destroyed. Their archer doesn't give up, though, and he begins attacking Hyung Soo's crew with his arrows, inspiring the other pirates to launch an attack as well to take Hyung Soo's ship as theirs. It's not an easy fight because the underwater volcanoes keep erupting around them, starting a fire on the ship, and the enemy captain won't listen to Hei Rang when she asks him to work together to survive. When Hei Rang is starting to think they have no hope left, Maki shows up on the legendary ship together with the penguins to save them all. The crew jumps over before anyone could get killed, but at that moment, a new whirlpool appears on the water and gets more volcanoes to erupt, destroying the enemy ship. Fortunately, the pirates manage to get their new ship away thanks to Hei Rang's good use of the helm and thoughtful orders on how to handle the sails. On top of the mountain, the storm gets worse and Muchi and Hyung Soo have to drop their swords to avoid being hit by lightning. After watching their ships go down, though, their fury returns and the battle starts once again regardless of the lightning situation. Hyung Soo manages to stab Muchi, but it's not in a vital spot, meaning Muchi still has a chance. One of the thieves throws a sword at his boss and he uses it to push Hyung Soo into the spot the lightning always comes back to, instantly killing him when it hits. Hours later, everyone is back on the new ship, and their wounds are taken care of. Hei Rang admits she may accept Muchi as co-captain if he behaves, and when Muchi admits he'd follow her into the afterlife, Hei Rang kisses him. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more.